بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أهلا بكم طلاب وأطباء طب الفم والأسنان في International Online Dental Uses Congress في نسخته الأولى من اتحاد الجامعات العلمية لطب الأسنان وحديث التخرج والتابع ل EADS Egyptian Association of Dental Students وهي الجهة العلمية الوحيدة الموثقة في مصر والتابعة للاتحاد العلمي فيما يحط الطالب وحديث التخرج داخل الجامعات المصرية وهدفنا هو تطوير وتعليم طلاب الأسنان في جميع مجالات الأسنان كما نهدف إلى تطوير الطلاب في أجزاء أخرى مثل السوفت سكيلز ونحن متواجدين الآن في أكثر من 33 جامعة ويتضمن المؤتمر أكثر من 100 دكتور من مصر وخارج مصر من الدول العربية والإفريقية المختلفة من كبار الدكاترة والأساتذة المتواجدين وسوف تحصل على شهادة معتمدة بعد حضورك نسب الحضور المطلوبة للمؤتمر وهناك سحبات يومية تصل قيمتها المالية إلى 4000 جنيه مصريا وإجمالي السحبات في المؤتمر تصل إلى 50000 جنيه مصريا ونعلن عن الشراكة بيننا وبين دول لبنان، فلسطين، السودان، رواندا، قطر، السعودية، تونس، المغرب، تنزانيا تشرف بالإعلان عن بورد الرسمي للمؤتمر رئيس المؤتمر الأستاذ الدكتور عبد الفتاح صدقة الرئيس الشرفي للمؤتمر الدكتور حاتم الجندي السكرتير العام للمؤتمر الأستاذ الدكتورة هالة هزاع اللجنة العلمية للمؤتمر الأستاذ الدكتورة علياء محروس المشرف الأكاديمي الأستاذ الدكتور جعلان الجندي الضيف الشرفي للمؤتمر الأستاذ الدكتور شذا حمان Hey, Dr. Roy, live now. Hello, everyone. Um, good evening. First of all, I would like to thank the Egyptian Society of Dental Students, which is the International Association of Dental Students. حابب نوه بالشكر Egyptian Society of Dental Students لأنه نعملين هذا المؤتمر. Uh, for free دعما لطلاب الاسنان لطلاب طب الاسنان uh, في مصر ودول العربيه ودول الافريقيه so thank you very much for this kind invitation and i hope you the best of success in your future events regarding the our topic for today um, it is called the anticipatory guidance in pediatric dentistry. From this topic, we will define the anticipatory guidance. We will differentiate. We will know what do you mean by anticipatory guidance. What do you mean by it? What's the aim or what's the reason? What is the anticipatory guidance? Then, we will differentiate between the different stages according to age. Yani, uh, the relation between anticipatory guidance and the actions that should be done for every child in every age a group. And we will explain the preventive actions according to the age specific groups. I will see um and no. كل شيء مش معروف everything that is unknown usually we have fear from it العالم بتخاف من الشيء الغير معروف أو الغير معلوم so once these unknown things are known then parents and children they can defeat the monster mouth because everything is known so anticipatory guidance الهدف الأساسي تبعها إنه العالم تصير تعرف what they should do in order to prevent dental diseases. So first of all, what is anticipatory guidance? Actually, anticipatory guidance it is considered as a new science in 1995. This science has been developed in the University of Iowa and USA. And now it is considered or now it is adopted by the American Association of Pediatric 
Dentistry, the AAPD. So if you check the guidelines of the AAPD, then you can see anticipatory guidance as a main topic in these guidelines. So how we can define the anticipatory guidance? It is a term where this term describes a proactive, a developmentally based counseling system. So anticipatory guidance is a counseling system that is based on the different developmental stages of children. We said before, every age group has specific actions that should be done where this system will focus on the needs of a child at a particular stage of life again. So this system will give the chance for the parents in order to talk about their child, to get the age-appropriate information, and to look ahead at how growth and the environment will affect their child's oral health in the next few years. So there are different stages to be covered in the anticipatory guidance system. First of all, we will start at the prenatal stage, which means when the mother is pregnant. What? she should do at this stage. Second stage is from birth until the six months of age. Then from six months till 12 months, then from one to second year, from the second year till six years. Then after it, we have the final two stages from seven to nine and 10 and until 13 or above years of age. So we will discuss what are the actions, what are the information that every parent should know and what they should do at every stage. First of all, let's start with the mother or the prenatal guidance. What are the information that the mother should know? First of all, mothers must delay colonization so we must educate the parents and especially to mothers in order to avoid the saliva sharing behaviors why because this will prevent the streptococcus mutants in their infant's mouth as much as possible second mothers should take care of their teeth this means they must go to a dentist and remove the decay. Why? Because this would also minimize the potential or uh, the potentiality of the transfer of the streptococcus mutants to the infant. This would help to minimize, to reduce the incidence of early childhood caries, which is the ACC. Also, mothers must take care very well of their teeth by regular brushing and flossing on a daily basis. Mothers also must take care of their diet at least till the, thir till, uh, the 30th month of, the, of their child's age. In the Taliban, till two and a half years. Of the children of the child's age. Also, mothers must take or must use the fluoride, the fluoridated toothpaste, and they must also use the uh, and drinks with the uh, 0.05 non alcoholic uh, non alcoholic sodium fluoride. Also, on daily basis, every night, this should be as a habit for them. Okay, so once the child is born, so the, the recommendations for the child, he must try uh, between six till up to six months. We must try to stop 
night feedings once the teeth erupt because at this age group uh, the first primary tooth would erupt so breastfeeding should be encouraged of course along with the good oral hygiene and age appropriate healthy and complementary foods and this must be arranged again with the pediatrician if a child needs a bottle to fall asleep then it should contain plain water so never ever let a child sleep with a baby with a bottle containing milk never this should be not be done at all so parents and mothers specifically must use other than feeding to calm a crying baby and this also can be discussed with the pediatrician we must Counsel the parents on methods of delaying the colonization with the cariogenic bacteria, especially the streptococcus mutans. As we said before, we must delay the introduction of juices, preferably until the one year of age. The second stage, which is between 6 and 12 months, At this age group, primary teeth will be more present. So uh, some of these teeth may, be, may go unnoticed or may be stressful for the child, which may cause irritation, which may cause restlessness, which may cause drooling of saliva and loss of appetite. So such discomfort can be reduced by chewing on a heart or a frozen teething ring or by applying pressure over the gums or rubbing them with clean fingers for infants who continue to feed on demand at night parents should wipe the teeth clean after feeding definitely we should we shall never allow the plaque to uh, grow so we must always remove the plaque since there is no plaque no caries we must counsel the parents to begin brushing once the teeth erupt so even if the child has only one tooth such tooth must be cleaned we must review the oral hygiene techniques for infants with caretaker using a soft brush and using a right sized amount of dentifrice or toothpaste or no toothpaste at all so where the mothers can only clean the teeth by using a a, a, a warm uh, gauze so in a gauze with a bit of water warm water so uh, then the mother can clean the teeth we must Consider at this age group the fluoride supplements at six months, especially if drinking water is non-fluoridated. And according to the anticipatory guidance system, if you find that this child is at high risk of developing caries, then you must consider the use of topical fluorides you must review the pacifier use and the safety and the hygiene issues. You must discuss the role of sugar in dental caries initiation. You must review what to do if the infant experiences oral trauma, like giving the parents an emergency number in your local area. We must discuss sucking habits and we will talk again about the sucking habits later on where this sucking habits is considered as a natural reflex which is present in the utero and is generally given up by four to five years of age so if at this during this time if a child exhibits a, a, a this habit we shall not freaking out the parents 
But if such habit persists beyond this age, then it may result in malocclusion, especially during the eruption of the permanent teeth. So it's about six and seven. So in order to break this habit, the child must be educated about the harmful effects of, su of some sucking. Such child must be encouraged and his efforts to quit the habit. And we must praise this child about quitting this habit or stop sucking the habit. So praising and not punishing is the correct way to stop or to let him stop this habit definitely we must search for the source of stress if this child is subjected to a stress then you must stop this stress then he might stop sucking his thumb regarding the pacifier sucking so here is a picture of the preferably used pacifier. It is called the orthodontic pacifiers. So you can see from this picture that the recommended pacifier should have a curved top for natural fit to the palate. Must have an angle tip for proper tongue placement thin neck which allows the mouth to close properly and it is uh, or it has a sharp a heart shaped shield which is designed for baby's face so if a of a child wants to use a pacifier which is normally so you must recommend for your patient to use an orthodontic pacifiers when the child grows up between 12 and 24 months in one to the, his second year of life at this age all primary teeth are erupted at this age the occlusal re relationship is determined is established so we must review with the parents the normal dental and oral anatomy during the initial examination you must recommend brushing at least twice daily if a sippy cup or and we must discontinue the bottle use by the 12 months of age at first at year one the child must stop using the bottle what are the alternatives here you must shift into the sippy cup some parents may tell you that the use of sippy cup is a bit difficult for the child so in order to have like a transition period between the uh, bottle and the sippy cup, you can offer for your patient to use a straw cup. And afterwards, they can shift into a sippy cup. And finally, the child can use the normal and drink from the normal cup. That, if if once you recommend the sippy cup or the straw cup such cups must contain only milk or water and we must restrict the juices to meal times only and as we said before we must recommend the use of juices not before the first year of age. We must provide dental visits at 12 months at his first birthday as recommended by the different academies, the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, 
the American Dental Association, the um, uh, so all of these academies, they recommend that the first visit for a dentist should be on his first birthday. Others would say uh, approximately six months after the eruption of the first tooth. It can happen also. So if a first tooth erupted at four months, then at 10 months, the visit must be accomplished never ever later than his first birthday you as a general dentist you must provide a dental referral as soon as possible especially if the caries if caries were identified usually even and you please you should take care of the initial lesions at this age Always keep in your mind the urge heart head caries, one of the most chronic problems for children, for young children at this young age. So you must provide the topical fluoride treatments every six months, or as indicated by the end by the child individual needs so according to his needs or according to the risk assessment so you you need to check how for for how much this child is susceptible to dental caries and this is done by caries risk assessment and there are a lot of systems that you can use in order to assess caries so according to the result of this assessment, you can decide the use of topical fluorides and its different uh, modalities. Also at this age, you must assess the speech and language. One to two years. So here is a table that would show you how would the speech and language normally develop. At birth, there would be normal sounds. At three months, the baby will start to use different cries for different situations. At six months, he would start to use or to play with his, to, to, to try his vocal cords, bubbling, gurgling. At 12 months, one year, he would start using one word, mama, baba, and so on. And at second year, the child will start to use two word questions. Three years, three words, four years there. At this age, the child will start to uh, make a combination of four or more words in a sentence and at five years he would start to talk almost normally also at this age group you must develop plans for oral trauma it's very critical age for dental trauma either in the home either at home or at the in the preschool or or in the nursery so also at home, you must reinforce the home with child proofing and you must use the car seat at this young age because the car seat would prevent the uh, major injuries to occur if there were accidents, car accidents. And also, the child proofing, uh, child proofing the home, it must, they are very mandatory nowadays, especially um, uh, to be safe or to, to, to ensure safety from electrical course and poison control. Now, this age group is from two to six years. 
from two to six years at six years at you may start that uh, growing up at six years the child or the first permanent tooth will start to erupt some children will start lose his primary teeth first primary teeth maybe at this age so mothers or parents would start to expect or must know that there will be a uh, new teeth coming up so you must review the pattern of eruption you must tell uh, the parents about the sequence of eruption eruption of first permanent molars and they must differentiate between the the primary and the permanent teeth so once the first permanent molar is erupted then they must take a very good care uh, and not mistaken by the, the second primary molar you must also describe at this age the healthy periodontal tissue you need to reassess the fluoride status at the periodic visits and determine both the supplement and the age appropriate vehicle also this is again this is based on the caries risk assessment you must recommend that the child begin brushing and always with parent supervision and assistant so you must start recommending the flossing once daily at this age you need to discuss the use of dental sealants and these dental sealants whether for the primary molars or even for the first permanent molar if it is erupted you need to explain the dental radiographs and the need for dental radiographs at this age and also it is according to the risk assessment you need to plan the child's next dental visit again based on the results of the risk assessment you need to discuss the parental separation or the presence at or their presence at the dental visits and normal child anxiety at this age here we can say that for a first visit for the child for a dental office always uh, parents must be always accompanying their child at the operatory room N not for any other reason than moral reason moral support for them also we must review the diet at outside the home and its care is potentiality maybe at school if they are eating healthy food or not we must encourage the use of helmets pads and mouth guards when appropriate and we must prepare a plan for the home and school for oral injury and treatment options we must encourage again and again the use of car seats and the uh, use of seat belts also. At this age, if the child is still sucking his thumb, then we must discuss with the parents how to stop this habit. So here are uh, some uh, techniques that you may use. I'm sure that all of you have taken in your courses and your faculties the uh, thumb sucking and uh, the problems that would uh, result from thumb sucking and how to stop this habit. So this is just briefing for everything that you have taken before. Again, it is normal until the age of four or five, but at the age of six and seven, now the problem is serious and this uh, patient could end up with an overbite and other muscular and 
dental problems. So we need to ask the child to stop sucking the uh, thumb during the day because uh, uh, if he sucks his thumb during the day, then we must ask him to stop it because usually, usually the thumb sucking habit is only at night and it is usually involuntary. So we may find a helper, a helper that will remind your child not to suck, bandage, funny sticker on his thumbnail, baseball glove, anything. Again, you must praise your child and not punish him. You may consider using a better tasting solution such as the stop set or, an, or any other product on your child's thumb. If all of these uh, if all of these uh, techniques didn't work up, then it's time to, uh, to to the dentist to interfere and start using the appliances that would force the child to stop his habit. Briefly again, how we can uh, how can the child play it safe on the field? So he must wear a mouth guard. When playing contact sports at this age groups where mouth guards can help prevent injury to a person's jaw, mouth, and dental structures, and they are significantly less expensive than the cost to repair an injury. Definitely, it's only a mouth guard that can be customized either uh, by the dentist or they can buy it ready-made mouth guards. It's very cheap in comparison to the cost of treatment. For example, avulsion and the consequences of avulsion, the complete loss of the tooth. So parents must know these things. You must advise your child to wear a helmet where these helmets would absorb the energy of an impact and would help prevent damage to the head. Wearing protective eyewear, where the eyes are extremely vulnerable to damage, especially when playing sports. Wearing a face shield in order to avoid scratched or bruised skin. From hockey pucks, basketballs, and racquetballs, all of these can cause severe facial damage at any age. Finally, the last age groups, which is from 7 to 9 and from 10 to 14 years of age. From 7 to 9 years of age, there is a critical stage, a developmental stage, which is the ugly duckling stage. So parents must know that this stage is a normal developmental stage. Nothing to worry about it. Yes, it is aesthetically not good, but it is normal and once the and it will disappear by itself once the canines would erupt they make the forces and everything will be corrected later on by itself so no need to freak out no need to ask for orthodontic treatment to fix the ugly duckling stage remember first we said that Always parents must supervise their children to brush their teeth. At this age, nine years, around nine years, ten. So it's the time to stop from supervising. For parents, they can stop from supervising their children while they are performing their oral hygiene measures. However, they can assess their uh brushing techniques periodically from once in a while and the last age group from 10 to 14 you need to talk about the facial growth and the changes in appearance and in case you have seen there is a major problem then it's time to refer this case to an ortho dentist and always and always ever insist and assess the oral hygiene for those patients. My lecture or my presentation came to an end. 
Um, I would say, or they say that a child laughs or smiles around 400 times a day. So let's all make this smile worth it. Let's all give the right information at the right stage for at the right stage of age for our patients in order they can smile freely, happily, so they can have a happy life. Thank you very much for your listening. And uh, I want to say something before I finish. I would like to invite everyone who is listening or watching this webinar to uh, fill on, uh, to share and to like the live streaming and fill out the Google form that will be shown right away. Thank you very much again.